Welcome back to Just Chat. And this is the series of videos we do on Thursday and Sunday evenings just for our own amusement. So, before we get into anything else today, I am unfortunately going to have to respond to a defamatory tweet that has cropped up on Twitter. So, uh, let me show you the tweet. Here we go. Christopher Boozy, remember that sue me woman who my lawyer sent the cease and desist letter to? It was hard for me to read that, as I'm sure all of our grammar mavens must realize. The one who raised nearly $10,000 for legal fees from anti megan accounts. She is telling everyone she donated the money. It gets better. Okay, so first of all, the only true statement in this is yes, his lawyer did send me a cease and desist letter. I'm sure many of you will recall, I showed it to you on a video and then crumbled it up and threw it in the trash which is about what it was worth. But our next sentence, the one who raised nearly $10,000 for legal fees from anti megan accounts. Oh no, we've got some inaccuracies there. For one thing, it's over $10,000, thank you very much. And for another, none of these funds came from anti megan accounts. These funds all came from human beings. No bots, no accounts. These are people who listed their names, their email addresses, in some cases their actual physical addresses, when they bought the merchandise or made their donations. And straight across the board, I can tell you this, the overwhelming majority of comments were pro-free speech and not anti-anybody or anything. So that is a complete fabrication. Now, she is telling everyone she donated the money. And note that donated is in quotes. Well, I challenge Christopher Boozy to come up with one single person to whom I said I had donated the money, because that's patently false. Not only am I not telling everyone, I'm not telling anyone. Why? Because of course I haven't donated the money. That's a lie. It is an outright lie. I did not donate the money, or I did not, quote, donate, unquote, the money, suggesting that I've absconded with it. And, of course, he finishes up by saying it gets better. Well, yes, in fact, it does. This ain't my first rodeo. Not only did I not donate the money, I have not even taken possession of the donated money. It is all still in the hands of the organizations that collected it, either through the donations or through the sale of the t-shirts. They've still got the money, all but $200 of it, which was my own personal donation to the fund. And I used that money to open a, a savings account. It's not even a checking account, it's a savings account that the money will eventually go into. But no need to put it in there now. Why? Because the banks are not paying interest. So who cares where it is? It's not doing us any good in terms of earning interest. So it might as well stay in the hands of totally independent, totally objective, totally unbiased third parties whose records will verify the exact disposition of that money. Thank you very much. And yeah, I guess it does get better because 
there's just nowhere for him to go on this. It's a complete fabrication, you know? So better, better luck next time, Mr. Boozy, because I don't know where in the world this guy got the idea that I would trade my reputation for $10,000. Two million, and I might think about it. Um, no, I wouldn't actually, but point is, good heavens, what is this man suggesting? That I have stolen the money? Why? I, why? No, the money is there. Now, let's talk about the possibility of donation, because that has been kicked around. People have asked, what is going to become of the money if, if it's never needed, if we don't have to use it for the intended purpose? And we have discussed donation. But this is far off in the unforeseeable future. And who knows what could happen between now and then. For example, I have actually looked up a few pro-free speech organizations that are highly rated, well-regarded, and they would be possible candidates for a donation. Uh, the Institute for Free Speech, by the way, is probably like the leading contender on that list. But that's not something I'm going to decide. That's something the channel is going to decide. And we're not going to decide until, until the money's no longer needed. So, right now, the money is sitting. It's there not only to, uh, to be used as a fund in case someone is sued or faces criminal charges as a result of the Sussex Squad activities, but remember, it's also there to serve as a deterrent so that these people understand that they cannot pick off the people who don't share their view, that nutmeg is the second coming. They can't deny people their right to free speech just because that person might have a teensy little channel and few economic resources and might be unable to defend themselves. It's a deterrent. It sends a message that we will not go down without a fight, and we will not let our brothers and sisters who are in this fight with us go down just because they may have small channels, not a lot of subscribers, lack the financial resources to defend themselves. So, yeah, the fund is doing what it's supposed to do in that regard, but no one has come forward and said, I am being victimized by these people. They're taking me to court. They've called the police on me or whatever. Because remember, it's legal fees. And that, that means it's not something that would be used to sort out a squabble with Twitter or YouTube or anything like that. It's if the people who are attempting to silence anyone who disagrees with nutmeg if they bring suit or cause a suit to be brought, if they bring criminal charges or cause criminal charges to be brought, that that money will be used for the legal fees. So in that sense, it hasn't been used as a deterrent. I'm pretty sure it is a deterrent. I hope it continues to be a deterrent. My hope is that it never has to be used, that the Sussex squad realizes that we can and will fight back and they pick another target. In that case, yes, we will be looking to make a donation to put the money to good use, but who knows what that's going to be. The world is a crazy, dangerous place. There are natural disasters, there are criminal and terrorist activities. By the time we are ready to say we no longer need the money, we could find people in desperate need 
uh, people whose need has nothing to do with their ability to speak their minds freely, but rather has more to do with their ability to eat, to take their next breath, to make it through to the next day. So, who knows? That is far off in the future, and we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But no, the money has not been donated. The money has not even been touched. It's exactly where all of the donors placed it to begin with. And no, I am not planning on running off to Tijuana with that $10,000. Now, let's get on to everything else and just get the video proper started. We've had an interesting news week. Oh, news slash week. I'm not referring to Newsweek, the periodical. An interesting news week. So we're going to cover a few topics and we'll do that when we come back. has come out with the information that the plot, and that's how it's being described, a plot to leave the UK by Nutmeg and Ginger was hatched only six months into their marriage. And he, he cites an incident in which Harry was having discussions with Oprah Winfrey six months after they were married about going off to California and doing this tell-all interview. So I guess for anyone who still harbors the naive notion that this was something they did because they had to do it because they were just pushed so hard by the vicious royal family, no, no. Apparently this was the plan all along. So I'm wondering what that is going to do to, among other things, Nutmeg's declining popularity, because that's the next thing we are going to talk about. Um, YouGov has done another poll, and Nutmeg's popularity in the U.S. is plummeting. And there are news stories about it. Here are the raw numbers. 45% of the people surveyed said they had a very favorable or somewhat favorable view of nutmeg. 46% said they have a somewhat or very unfavorable view of nutmeg. And the way they calculate this is that that says that her popularity is minus one. Uh, yeah, so it's dumping in the U.S. as well as the U.K. Now, I've taken a look at this and tried to figure out if there are things in particular that might be responsible for this. Because those of us who have been following her career for a while... We all have our own reasons, and they tend to be a little more sophisticated because most of us have done some research, we've watched some videos, we've read some articles, at minimum. So our view is a little more nuanced than the average person who, and I, I throw myself into that category last year, as I've told you, and I know it's laughable, I didn't even know she was American. I thought she was a Canadian actress. And in fact, I wasn't even sure what part of Canada she was from. Um, she was a Canadian actress. I had no idea she was biracial. Nothing. Just, oh, a little Canadian actress is marrying Harry. I expect that that is fairly typical of 
most people out there. Most people are just not all that interested one way or another. But looking at this and saying, what's responsible for the recent drop? Well, I guess being sidelined by the royal family is probably at least partially responsible. I have to think that most people who previously held a favorable opinion of her did so because of the royal family connection. After all, they didn't even know who she was before she tied up with Harry, so why would they have had an opinion of her at all? It, it is certainly connected to the royal family, and perhaps the Jubilee has taken a little bit of luster off that shine. Uh, she's gotten a lot of very bad press for ignoring her father. For most of us, it's very hard to take someone seriously when they are carrying on about love and peace and compassion when they're not even speaking to their own family. And it's not just ignoring her very elderly and very ill father. Her own sister is suing her. And her sister is suing her for defamation because many of the things not Meg said or caused to be said in Finding Freedom and in other public venues have been proven by Samantha to be false. And remember, defamation, uh, one of the key defenses is truth. If Nutmeg had been telling the truth, she'd have nothing to worry about with the defamation suit. But we know she wasn't because Samantha has ponied up the proof. She has produced photographs. Uh, and, you know, they say a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, we'll see what it's worth to a jury. Um, we also have the problem of Nutmeg jumping on every possible bandwagon out there, whether or not is she's ever had any connection with this. She jumps on a bandwagon and then jumps off just as quickly. I think the Uvalde situation is typical of that. But we've got some more because she recently uh, made a phone call to one of the Uvalde parents. How do we know this? Because her public relations machine spits that information out to every possible news outlet that is favorable to them. So, yes, she made a phone call. Did she make it because she cares about this person? She doesn't even know this person. She made it for the publicity. How do we know this? Because she, she piloted that single phone call into all this publicity if she had truly been motivated to simply reach out to this woman, mother to mother, hey, there would have been no photo ops. There would have been no public relations releases. We all know what's going on. And then, of course, uh, she did something. And now this is a little dangerous in the United States. Uh, she made a contribution of snacks to a group of women who favor gun control. I don't know. I, you got to wonder, maybe she's not planning to go back to Texas anytime soon. I should hope not. But I looked at this because there is something about this basket of snacks thing that has been troubling me going back to the $25 Starbucks gift certificates to the people who were working on, what was it? Or was it that 40 by 40 birthday disaster she did? I don't recall what it was. I'd have to look it up. She gives snacks to people who don't need food. No kidding. Her idea of charity is giving coffee and donuts to people who are not hungry. Now, I got to wonder how one considers that charity given the fact that there are plenty of people in the world who are hungry. Uh, 
And, and I'm sure even though it would be good for them to have something more substantial than coffee and donuts, we've seen this ourselves with some of the contributions we've made through this channel. For example, we have bought um, was it a tortilla flour for elderly Native Americans, just bang, bags of flour so that our donation is literally going to feed somebody and not somebody who's volunteering for an organization and has a nice hot dinner waiting on the table when they get home to their nice warm house. We are talking about people who are genuinely hungry, people who truly need the food. So Nutmeg's charity which, by the way, is getting written up in all the publications. By the, I've got the notes, as you know. I always throw that in to the video notes. All of the links to all of these articles. Hey, I, mean, I love the fact that she's giving somebody food, but I'd love it a whole lot more if the people she was giving it to were hungry. She's not. She's not going anywhere near the truly poor people. She is doing this for either political causes, i.e. the gun control people, or high-profile causes, i.e. the Uvalde parent, that are likely to get her photo ops and get her name in the press. So, I think we all know what's going on. Now, most of us have known this for a while. As I say, I started getting weird vibes off that, going back to the Starbucks gift certificates. But I think the general public is catching on to this one, too. I think that is one of the things that's starting to make some headway. I think people are just getting sick of seeing this woman throw herself into the center of every publicity-worthy event out there. And it's starting to take its toll. So, yes, according to YouGov.com, she's hit negative numbers here in the U.S. Long time coming, but as I said, most people probably don't care one way or another. So, you know, it's definitely progress. Now, let's flip back to uh, the exit from the UK, the Mexit, the premature Mexit, because six months into the marriage. Now, I read an awful lot of articles, watch videos, etc., about nutmeg and ginger just in preparation for what I'm giving you here. And unfortunately, I cannot recall where I got this idea. Uh, I believe it was an article. So I need to state this is not original with me. I just don't know who I'm plagiarizing here. One of the writers I had read not too long ago had said, why didn't Harry just retire quietly in the UK? There was no need for him to break off with his family to go halfway across the world, to set up shop in California, to make a fool of himself meddling in other people's politics, when all he had to do was retire to one of the royal family's many, many country houses. Well, you know, we all know he did not want to work as a royal. Uh, he doesn't seem to want to work as anything else. The man just wants to live a life of leisure and... I guess, do nothing but play all day. He could have done this. He could have retired quietly to the UK, played polo with his friends, raised some chickens, whatever it is he wants to do as, you know, the benevolent country squire. And as for Nutmeg, as the wife of a benevolent country squire off in the boondocks, I don't know what they call it in the UK. So 
To my UK viewers, what do you call it? We call it the boondocks here when it's out in the middle of nowhere and we have many less flattering names for it. Tell me what you call it. Where is it that he would have retired to? What's the word you would use? She could have gone off and then come out. Oh, every month, maybe two months, made some sort of public appearance the paparazzi would be all over her, which we know she loves. And because she wouldn't have been meddling in anybody's politics, because she wouldn't have been thrusting herself in everybody's face again and again and again, because she wouldn't have been slamming the royal family, slamming half of the United States, because she's made it very clear that she finds Republicans despicable, and the only political agenda worth pursuing in her book is a very lim liberal democratic agenda. I have to say liberal democratic because there are a great many middle of the road Democrats who would not agree with this woke agenda of hers. She would have been off in the UK. She never would have alienated all of these people. And at this point, having made the occasional public appearance, having trotted out the little ones, let the people see them, she probably would be very, very well regarded. So to whomever it was, and I am so sorry to whomever it was, I have truly just mislaid your name, so I can't give you credit. But whoever it was that came up with this alternative hypothesis, hey, I think you're right. I think this would have been the ideal plan for both Nutmeg and Ginger. Nutmeg could have had the favorable publicity she wanted. Ginger could have the unemployed life that he seems to want. They would have still been rich. They would have still had the royal family connections. And I think ultimately they would have been a great deal better off than they are now. So I'm interested in your opinions. Tell me what you think of this. As always, we're going to take a look at a slideshow on the way out. Meanwhile, have an absolutely terrific day and I will see you next Thursday.